do we do with the oil service stocks now that the price of crude seems to have found a floor and may actually be rebounding from its lows? This group's been in a rut for months as the price of oil came down and domestic producers remained disciplined rather than spending like drunken sailors on new capacity. Plus, the oil service companies are, in some ways, let's call them victims of their own success. They've made the oil and gas industry so efficient, boy, it was really inefficient for a long time, that producers can get much more out of a fossil fuel of just drill a few wells and produce much more oil. That's the way it's done now. Hey, by the way, that's why the Chapel Trust sold Halliburton back in August, getting out of 39 and change. In retrospect, it was a good move, given the stock slid lower for several months after we got out, bottom to 32 and change last week, and has now bounced to around 37. I was thinking, geez, if they can get so much more out of each well, you don't need them as much. But you know what? Now we're in earnings season. And I've already heard from the big three oil service operators, SLB, Halliburton, and Big News. So has anything changed? Don't forget, a couple of weeks ago, we checked in with a resident commodities expert, Carly Garner. She explained that oil could be headed back to $100 by this spring. Bye, bye, bye! If she's even partially right, that makes the oil service place a lot more enticing. At the same time, the whole group is now cheap. It sells for t- to 11 to 15 times this year's earnings estimates. I don't recall this group ever being this cheap. More important, both SLB and Halliburton rallied nicely after the report on Friday and Monday, respectively. Baker uses the exceptions down nearly 5% in response to its quarter, but they've been the worst operator for a long time. Eh, say la vie. Oh, let's take them one by one. SLB, the old summer jay, kicked things off on Friday morning with a slight top and bottom line beat for the fourth quarter. Revenue up 14% year over year. Earnings up 21%. Free cash flow, it exploded up 167% year over year. Coming in more than $1 billion higher than what Wall Street was looking for. That's, that's pretty amazing. Now, SLB's main source of strength was its booming international business, which has now delivered 10 consecutive quarters of double-digit growth. Why don't people talk about this? That's amazing. These guys don't give us much in the way of explicit guidance, and they never beat their chests and tell you to buy them. Manage- management's qualitative commentary about the future was pretty encouraging, though. CEO uh, Olivier Lepouz, is he solid, is predicting another year of strong growth driven by international. He called out the Middle East, deep water drilling, and SLB's new digital tools as long-term growth drivers. <laughs> These guys, I, I've always been one of them. You know, I interviewed with them uh, in 1982 and was turned down before the interview was even finished. That's okay. I, it, it meant something to me. By the way, uh, last Thursday, SLB raised its dividend by 10 I don't know what it meant to me, though. It raised its dividend by 10%, and with the earnings report on Friday, the company said it plans to increase its buyback this year. I think that helped soften the blow for their higher-than-expected capital expenditure forecast because returning all that capital shareholders is a powerful sign of confidence for the future. Plus, they have a lot of credibility on the cash management front after putting up such a huge free cash flow beat this time, something, by the way, that my old friend Stephanie Link highlighted today when she was talking with Scott, and I think she's dead right about it. All right, how about Halbert? They had a slightly different result with a small revenue miss, but also a bigger earnings beat. Hal's sales were roughly flat year over year, while their earnings were up roughly 19%. They also gave it a nice free cash flow beat, but nowhere near what we got from SLB and scale. Hal's international business was strong. That's important, but it's not as big as their domestic business. And the North American business struggled. Uh, actually, that was the bummer. It's one reason why we sold, another reason actually why we sold this trust over the summer, because I wasn't happy with how well they were doing. Now, Halliburton also doesn't give much explicit forward guidance, but they, too, had an optimistic qualitative outlook for the year. On the conference call, straight shooter CEO Jeff Miller said that the oil services market would remain strong. His words, first, we see an increase in service intensity everywhere we operate, whether it's longer laterals in North America, smaller and more complex reservoirs in mature fields or offshore deep water. Customers require more services to develop the resources, not fewer. Whoa. Money in the bank, people. In other words, there may be fewer rigs in service, which is what I was concerned about. But each well generates a lot more oil than it used to and a lot more business for Hal and his compadres, especially in the Permian. Miller went on to say that, as with SLB, Halliburton's near-term growth will be driven by its international business, talking about how he foresees multiple years of sustained exploration and production activity growing in the rest of the world. That's really bullish, not just dependent on Texas. He's very optimistic about the Middle East and the rest of Asia this year. Starting next year, he said Africa and Europe will lead the way with above-average growth. Finally, Miller's feeling confident about Halliburton's well con- uh, construction business. Put it all together. And you can understand why the stock rallied 2.5% yesterday in response to the quarter and then tacked on another 4% today because, man, that was much better than expected. Finally, uh, let's address Baker Hughes. 
the pretty on perform of the group. Although you could argue this one's simply not worth talking about because it's so much worse than SOB or Prince Hal. Maybe Baker used to spend too much time. Uh, maybe they were too long a subsidiary of General Electric back in the days when GE still had awful management. Either way, these guys delivered a mixed quarter, softer than expected revenue, coupled with a modest earnings beat. Unlike Halliburton, though, that wasn't paired with a strong outlook, and that's the reason why the stock sold down nearly 5%. While SLB and Halliburton are predicting double digit growth overseas and flattish results here in North America, Baker used to talk about a high single digit growth overseas and low to mid single digit declines in North America. Please just trust me that you'd rather be an SLB or Halliburton than Baker Hughes. You want best to breed, not worst to breed. In the end, the well-run oil service stocks are rallying, coming out of their earnings report. That's very positive. And after uh, uh, looking into what happened, I think SLB and Halliburton deserve all of this upside and more. Yes, I think they can keep climbing. Yes, the growth outlook for the oil service industry is better than I thought, going into earnings primarily thanks to increased activity overseas. More importantly, Halliburton put one of my biggest worries to rest. Remember I was concerned that producers can do more and more with fewer rigs, which meant the oil service companies might be victims of their own efficiency? But Halliburton explained how they're getting more and more money out of each well, too. So at worst, it's just a wash. Plus, as they help producers expand and extend the life of the individual wells, they make more money and incur fewer costs themselves, leading to improved margins. And that's how SLB and Halliburton could post really strong earnings and cash flow off of what were at best Okay, revenue numbers. Here's the bottom line of two stocks I really like. With the oil service stocks still pretty reasonably priced after prolonged downturns, I think you could do well buying either SLB or Halliburton now this earnings season, especially if Carly Garner's right that energy prices are headed higher. And I think she is. Andrew in Georgia. Andrew. How you doing, Mr. Kramer? Can you hear me good? Ah, uh, you sound good, buddy. What's going on? I appreciate that. So, first of all, hope you're having an amazing day. Um, yeah, it was a pretty a amazing day, to tell yes, the truth. Sir. I got a, it was. I got a question on stock Modine, M-O-D. I'm currently up 291%. And with their earnings coming up, I'm wondering, do you think that they will be able to maintain this momentum? You know, that is such a good company, okay? It's funny because when I first heard what Carriers was doing, buying heat pumps in Europe, I see, oh, my God, maybe they're going to be like this company, which, by the way, of course, I always called Matthew Modine, right? Matthew Modine. I mean, because it's like, you know, like Modine, Matthew, okay, actor. Uh, I think you should own it. It's still very inexpensive. I buy some MM. I also call it MM. I call it anything other than the name that it is. All right, let's go to Sean in Can or she Sean, Sean in Kansas. Sean. Sean is a Sean from Wichita. I want to shout my favorite rapper is 316 Jim. I got a question for you. What about LNG? Well, LNG, okay, so this is actually very interesting because I happen to like the CQP kind. I think that that's where the money is. Chenier Energy Partners with an 8% yield. That, Sean in Kansas, is the one I want you to. Clear? All right, oil service stocks are still pretty reasonably valued. I got to tell you, I like them. I like them. I like them both. I thought about buying them for the uh, Chapel Trust. I think you could do well buying either SLB or Halliburton now, the earnings season, especially seeing that energy prices might be headed back up. There's upside here, people. Much more ahead. Hey, guess what? If you might have missed the monthly investing club meeting, I can't help you. Maybe you're thinking of joining the club. That's up to you. But I can give you a sneak peek into what we were all talking about when I get to club member questions right here on Man Money. Then regular viewers know I tend to look at the Chinese stocks with a whole boatload of skepticism. But uh, you got to see what's going to happen later. I, It's called a reveal. And uh, I'm also taking your calls rapid fire tonight's edition of the Lighting Round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.